Hello, from LPL Financial, welcome to The Talking Point. I'm your host, Quincy Crosby. Good morning, everyone. It's Quincy Crosby. It is Monday morning, February 27th, and it, this is The Talking Point. Uh, the market has not yet opened, but uh, it looks as though it's going to open in positive territory. But as we all know, uh, given the concerns the market has about the Federal Reserve, about, you know, the overall effect that continued interest rate hikes is going to have on the economy, uh, things can change during the course of, of the entire week. There's an awful lot of Fed speak this week, and we are going to hear their opinions, the Fed speakers, on what do they see in terms of uh, further interest rates and whether or not the Fed needs to move from tw 25 basis points to 50 basis points. The market's trying to price this in. Uh, I have to just tell you that the Fed Funds futures market is not, you know, screaming 50 basis points for uh, March 22nd, but it has climbed higher. So in terms of probability. Now, the other thing I want to point out regarding last week, and I think it is important because this market uh, has recalculated, recalibrated what it sees happening uh, during the course of the year in terms of the Federal Reserve. And that is more rate hikes. Um, when we began the year, uh, the market thought, you know what, we had the, the February rate hike, and then, you know, there'll be one in March, and then maybe that's it, and even had priced in two rate cuts at the end of the year. Well, obviously, that has changed as inflationary pressures continue to tick higher. They're not screaming higher, but this is the way inflation moves. You know, the, the easy part, it seems to be done, but you still have the issue over wages. You still have the issue, which is what we saw in the Friday report, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, the PCE, is consumer spending. Uh, that remains high, and that is something that, um, you know, worries the Federal Reserve. So, all told, what happened as we got toward the end of last week, you started to see the probability, and I notice I say probability, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, but the probability of yet another rate hike, not just, not just one in March, not just another one in June, but how about another one sometime during the summer, which, you know, that suggests that even at 25 basis points, you, you add that up, it, it becomes basically a um, terminal rate of getting closer to 6%. And I also want to add here that there was an important white paper that was written by a former Fed official who is a well-known economist suggesting that perhaps they need 6% as their terminal rate to tamp down inflation, to damp, tamp down consumer spending and to dent, notice I say dent, not kill, but dent the labor market. So this is ongoing, it's fluid, and obviously the Fed is data dependent, the market is data dependent. But the concern is there. And remember that what got this whole issue started was Loretta Mester, head of the, um, the Cleveland Federal Reserve Bank, and also uh, uh, Bullard, who's, you know, he goes back and forth with his views, but head of the uh, St. Louis uh, Fed Bank, coming out and suggesting that, you know, perhaps we need 50 basis points at the March meeting in order finally to try to drive down these last vestiges of inflationary pressures. Now, also, I want to point out something else. Uh, the Fed has been concerned about rents. And in the consumer price index, the CPI, rents represent about 40%. And so that's something, though, every time you see an industry report, you will see that rents are coming down. Now, obviously, there are new leases, but what happens is when folks have a lease and they can't pay anymore, very often a landlord will work with the 
folks renting in order to keep them there because particularly in an environment where they're worried that perhaps you know the, uh, you know the the economy slides to the point where it'll be difficult for them to even find renters so but nonetheless every industry report suggests that rents are coming down across the country that will start to be reflected most likely even at the margin with the next CPI report and certainly the one after that. That will be helpful for the Fed and for the market to see that that concern is beginning to ease even again, even as slowly as, um, you know, as Chairman Powell has, has suggested. In other words, the wage component then becomes crucial. And obviously, we're going to see whether or not wages continue ease and notice not slide down but ease and that's going to be important too but the concern overall chairman powell mentioned it at the uh, press conference following the last fed meeting he said we are worried about the non-housing consumer um, you know expansion and that is consumer spending and every report we had last week indicates that the resilience of the consumer continues so overall when we get to this week uh, you know we have a market that sold off uh, but the market is still fairly expensive and this is where there's a concern does the market have to sell off even more deeper sell off in order to bring down that um, uh, forward earnings, 12-month forward earnings on the S&P 500. This is going to be important because, again, the bears are saying, yes, yes, that needs to happen. We need to have a deeper sell-off and bring down the valuations on the S&P 500 before we can kill off the bear and bring in investors, not just traders, but investors coming in and taking advantage of the uh, lower, uh, lower valuations. So this week, we already uh, began this morning, and this is Monday morning, with the durable goods report. This was very interesting because the headline number actually had durable goods coming down considerably. But if we strip out transportation, which you don't want to do that. It's difficult to come in and say, well, if we only get rid of this, everything is good. But if we strip out transportation, which tends to be volatile, um, actually the number was, was, was solid. But here's the very important part. We always look at core, core durable goods, right? This is important because that represents business spending. And that was up. And that was up markedly and that's a good sign it's telling you that companies feel comfortable enough with their situations to go out and buy durable equipment and uh, this is this is a positive for the uh, looking at the resiliency of the economy now you could turn around and say to me Quincy that's not what we want to see now we want to see everything coming down but you know if the market believes that the Fed is going to continue raising rates and, and that the Fed's terminal rate not, right now is closer to 5.5% and some are even saying it needs to go to 6% in order, in order to get rid of the kind of inflation that is hurting the Fed's mandate to restore price stability, even that, though that's 2%, the market would be happy with 2.5%, obviously. But nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, you want to have the Fed have the luxury, and I don't like to use that word, but the luxury to raise rates uh, with an understanding that the underpinning for the economy remains solid. That would be that would be you know that's that's what they think is their soft or softish landing. So in any event, this week is going to give us quite a bit of data, and also quite a bit of Fed speak. I don't know if that's good or bad because you know this is a world where they come out with their opinions uh, that can change the, the market at least for, for the headline. And also we have two important, two very important um, uh, retail. Um, numbers coming out, Target and also Lowe's. And remember, Target doesn't necessarily follow everything that we heard from Home Depot, 
But we, what we want to hear from Target is, are you seeing customers coming in and buying more than just necessities? Obviously, Target does not have the kind of, of food uh, display that Home Depot, uh, Walmart has. But nonetheless, uh, they do have client customers coming in and just going straight to the um, to the um, food food area, uh, the, the produce area. Um, you know, I have to say it just as a consumer. I see that when I when I go to my local uh, Target, folks that just go there and that's what they and that's what they check out. Um, the other thing is Target tends to get a little bit more of a of a consumer that has a, on the low end, but has a higher wage that's on the low end. Now remember, Walmart has said, look, we're getting lower wage earners, we're getting middle wage earners, and we're getting higher wage earners, folks that have household incomes of $100,000 and more. They're coming in for necessities too. So what we want to hear from Target is also about uh, their inventories, have they been growing? Do they have to get rid of a lot of a lot of uh, inventory and lower lower the prices to get uh, customers to come back in and take care of those inventories? It's going to be important. And in terms of lows, the same kind of of questions that we have are people upgrading their houses? Are they upgrading, uh, you know, existing homes, which are not coming on the market very much, by the way. Uh, and we want to hear what they say about consumer spending. Two very important um, day, uh, retailers in, in the country. So this week, again, we had durable goods. This week, we'll have a number of additional reports about housing, the Case-Shiller Home Price Index, for example. Uh, we will also have a report on construction. And this is interesting because construction spending has come up. It was negative, and the last report we had had it in positive territory. We want to see if that continues. And we see uh, job growth within construction actually picking up. And that is very interesting. It's extremely important. Also this week, I want to mention, too, that we are going to have reports on the manufacturing and the service sector. The ISM, Institute for Supply Management, is probably one of the most widely followed uh, um, focuses on manufacturing and also on services. It is purchasing managers, and they will tell us what they are seeing. So what are we looking for in manufacturing? We're looking to see if new orders are picking up. We're looking to see if expectations for hiring is picking up. That manufacturing report went down beyond into uh, tightening, right? Not expansionary, but tightening. And we saw it. Remember, 50 is the line in the sand. Above 50 in the headline number is expansion. Below 50 is contraction. And manufacturing went into contraction. However, however, the last report that we had showed a bit of a bottoming that we saw, yes, it was still in contraction, but not as bad as the month before. So that's what we're paying attention to. And it'll be very important because what it would suggest if we continue to see the bottoming, that even manufacturing, which has been hit, actually is showing signs of improvement. In terms of the services, which is the largest portion of our economy, uh, it has been an expansion territory, and what we uh, that means above 50. We want to see is it does it grow in expansion or does it contract within expansion? And also again, hiring expectations and new orders, all very important to give us a sense of the general backdrop, this general economic backdrop of the country. Believe it or not, the ISM reports have a very strong correlation, positive correlation with the S&P 500. So we'll, we will be following that this week. Those reports come out. The uh, service sector report comes out on Friday. This week, too, we're going to have uh, consumer confidence. And this will be important because, again, uh, the labor market remains strong. Gasoline prices have actually lost some of that climb that we saw Earlier uh, in the month, they have sort of settled back. Uh, diesel has settled back a bit. But the point I want to make is 
We want to see if consumers feel confident about, about their futures. This is at the end of the day, whether or not we say that, hey, things aren't bad. If they don't feel confident, that's important. But yet, yet, even with some of the weaker conf- consumer confidence reports that we've had, consumers are still spending, albeit using their credit cards more, but still spending. So there's an awful lot for the market to digest this week, but I would suggest that what the market is looking for from the Federal Reserve speakers, a long line of Federal Reserve speakers, what do they see in terms of mm -hmm, what the Fed needs to do? And they will come out and say that perhaps stick with 25 basis points, even if it means yet another rate hike at 25 basis points, giving the Fed flexibility? Or do they see the need for 50 basis points in the March meeting? So that's going to be extremely important for this market that has really been, been hit by concerns now that the Fed's need for more rate hikes is going to push us into a, a recession, and if not a recession, a deeper uh, economic slowdown. The market had become convinced that because the Fed, and this, this, these were initial expectations, were going to give us two rate cuts at the end of the year. That moved to one rate cut at the end of the year. And now, in terms of the Fed Funds futures market, no rate cut this year. But adding more rate hikes. Uh, this is a concern. It's weighing on a number of commodities, for example. Uh, the dollar has risen as a result of this. So th these are all important consequences of what the market perceives the Fed is going to do. And again, to repeat, you're going to hear one Federal Reserve speaker after another. So this is a very important week. We'll see if the market can gain momentum and if the S&P 500 can start climbing again uh, in those levels that we consider to be resistance uh, and, and move above uh, the level which we thought they were, it was going to gain momentum. Last but not least is that we, what we want to see is whether or not if we get a strong rally, as we think we might have today, is what leads the market higher. Will it be the cyclical names, consumer discretionary? Will it be the uh, you know, consumer staples? Or will the market still look ahead and say, no, consumer discretionary, the Fed will finish sometime this year. And will it be technology as it had been? Or is it going to be uh, you know, more concern that the, uh, that the Fed's rate hikes are going to hurt the technology sector, which, by the way, typically does not do well when rates are much higher. So a very important week for us to digest what the market sees uh, over the next couple of, of months. Remember, the market looks ahead by about three months. The market always gets the news first. That's what we used to say when I started on Wall Street. Take care. Please don't hesitate to call. Uh, it's a busy week all around, and uh, we will be available to answer any questions. And thank you so much for listening. Take care. This material was prepared by LPL Financial. It's for general information only and is not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. There is no assurance that the views or strategies discussed are suitable for all investors or will yield positive outcomes. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Any economic forecast set forth in the podcast may not develop as predicted and are subject to change. References to markets, asset classes, and sectors are generally regarding the corresponding market index. All indexes are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment and do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All information referenced in the podcast is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. Securities and 
and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and broker dealer, member FINRA and SIPC. Insurance products are offered through LPL or its licensed affiliates. To the extent you are receiving investment advice from a separately registered independent investment advisor that is not an LPL affiliate, please note LPL makes no representation with respect to such entity. If your financial professional is located at a bank or credit union, please note that the bank or credit union is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor. Registered representatives of LPL may also be employees of the bank or credit union. These products and services are being offered through LPL or its affiliates, which are separate entities from and not affiliates of the bank or credit union. Securities and insurance offered through LPL or its affiliates are not insured by the FDIC or NCUIA or any other government agency, not bank or credit union guaranteed, not bank or credit union deposits or obligations and may lose value.